Mariam Rad's night in police custody was the first she'd spent away from her children. Even through war, the hell on earth that they went through, uh, her and her children were not separated during her time. She's been granted bail under exceptional circumstances due to mental and physical health concerns and her responsibilities as a mother. Can you assure the people at In Young that they are safe? Ms Rad's husband, Mohammed Zahab, was a senior member of Islamic State in Syria. Police allege she went to Syria willingly, aware of her husband's work with the terrorist group. In a 2021 interview with the ABC, Ms Rad says she didn't have a choice in coming to Syria. I didn't know that my husband was a senior in the Islamic State. And, like, I didn't even know anything about my husband's work. She was among a group of four Australian women and 13 children repatriated in October. All government agencies, all law enforcement agencies assessed Mariam to be no risk before she was repatriated. And that was confirmed today by the court by granting her bail. People can expect us uh, to continue to monitor and take all of the necessary steps. This is the only charge levelled at any of the repatriated women and has sparked a debate about what will happen to the 40 Australian women and children who remain in Syrian detention camps. But will this policy of repatriations continue? And if so, where will the individuals be settled? And what possible reassurances can we receive that there won't be more terror charges? Legal experts say this shouldn't stop repatriations. This now clearly sends out a message that those who might be subject to future repatriations will clearly come under the radar of the Australian Federal Police. Ms Rad is due back in court in March. Kathleen Calderwood, ABC News, Sydney.